All right, so in this video, we're going to continue with our fault system, and we're gonna use a file bit comparison, so a FBC uh, instruction on this one. So we're going to be able to incorporate what we did with our masking with our mask instruction, and we're gonna be able to incorporate all that together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an instruction, or add a, uh, a, a rung, and then go up here to this is going to be if you look in your element group up top your where your instructions are this is going to be under special and then you're going to come over here to uh, file bit comparison you're going to drag that down and then what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to get our source now our source is going to be slightly different we're going to get our um, we're going to get our filtered so you can just drag your filter down here and put it in your source and it's just that easy our reference we're going to create a reference which is going to be something you want to reference off of so basically similar to what we did on the mask move we're comparing this against something else right so in this case we'll say batching alarms all zeros so what we're saying is that we're comparing any if anything is not a zero we want to indicate it as that is the problem that's the first thing it's going to catch right or that 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 is what it's going to catch not the first thing we're going to add controls to do the first thing so we're going to have this as the same dimension type as the mask or our the actual source that we're using which is going to be again 15 so we're going to come in here and for this matter come in here and select the first one now when that said you don't have to do anything with that because it's all zeros so that's going to standardly come in all zeros but you can double check to make sure that that is that and that is going to be that so now we're going to come in here and add our results so the this would be batching alarms uh, results and this is all the dimensions all the uh, array value needs to match so all of it needs to be the same now again come in here select the one you're going to be using again so this is all going to start with the first of each one of the dent values right so each one of these is the dent of 15 which is 480 bits again in the all zeros again a dent of 15 all 480 bits and then in the uh, results it's going to be a dent again 15 all 480 bits now this finally we're going to get to the um, this is the comparison control so this is where we're going to add in um, our actual name right so this is the actual instruction name if you would so we're going to call this uh, batching our alarm control FBC so this is perfectly fine to throw in here just like that that's gonna come in here. Now we're gonna give it a length. Now we want to have our length as 480 bits because that is what we determined is our finite uh, number of actual bits we want to monitor, right? So as this sits right now, our current, and this is per design, right? So if you're designing for 32 bits, you do 32 down here. If you're designing for 480 bits, you design for 480 bits. If you're designing for a different amount of bits, like in, in the instance of when we first did our first rung, it was only 120 bits. We would have just did 120 bits, right? That simple, right? Now the pos position is where it will end up coming uh, when it finds that. Now, now you need to put in a result, right? So this is going to be another control. This is going to be alarm uh, control result. So this will be just a standard tag. So then that comes in and then we'll give a link down here of 15. Okay, so actually I think I put that in uh, wrong. We need to do our control as far as that goes into our length and I as far as that goes as far as this is perfectly fine right so this is the controls now we just need to put a length in here maybe I just typed it wrong a minute ago I think that that's perfectly fine you know if you have it correct um, a good indicator would be if your left hand side over here which is your wrong edits are valid or not so uh, with that said let's go ahead and add in our controls so 
we want to go ahead and add a compare um, and our compare is going to be slightly different so we're going to have a couple different things we're going to have up here we're going to have our bit level and I'll explain this in just a second so what we want to do is we want to have our basically our position right so our control position so this is going to be our control position and we'll have that just indicated and we'll be we'll be doing I'm sorry <laughs> a little tongue tied right there uh, we'll be doing a done bit uh, so let's get the done bit for that and the reason we're putting the done bit in here is so that it can actually scroll through and continue the, the process similar to what we've done in the past when we want to continuously scroll and stuff of that nature so now let's do a compare <clears throat> and in the compare value we're going to uh, we're going to basically put in our actual compare uh, control position so we're going to get this control position again so what I like to do is, is simply come over here grab this and then we'll come over here grab this right here and come over here and get our control position right here and let's see it actually duplicated so I apologize for that so if you were to do this straight off the bat just hit this uh, browse button right here come over here and that's when you type in your control position and then you can come over here to position and then we want to say our position is equal to zero Okay, so if our position is equal to zero, then we want to continue the process, right? So we want to allow it to keep going. Now we will say we can come down here and latch this in as far as the input. So what we want to do is come over here to our standard bits and latch this in as far as this goes. So we'll come in and latch the uh, control bit in. This is going to be the in. So we'll call that that and then we'll latch that in so that it it basically is allowing the the system to actually you know rep uh and, and we'll go through and watch it watch this process scan it this will all make perfect sense as soon as it actually goes through the process now we do want to if you recall we have a reset and let's find our reset in here i believe our reset uh was the hmi reset Let's look on our HMI screen and our HMI screen. I believe we had a reset on the screen. Let's see, let's look on the screen. It might have been on the footer or the header. So let's see, footer and the header. So we actually don't have a reset yet. So we do need to put a reset in there, which is perfectly fine. We'll call this, uh, so let's go back down here. We'll call this uh, HMI reset. In our HMI reset, we're just basically saying that we it's not reset at this point in time. So we're gonna monitor the negative state or the non-active state. So we'll say HMI uh, alarm. We'll say HMI machine reset PB. Just to keep it simple. So that's not pressed. And then we can come in here and monitor that and basically say that. Now, the thing about here is we can go ahead and accept this and watch it run. So it's actually scrolling through all 480 bits right now. And what's happening is, is again, this bit, the, down, the done bit is actually cycling through and actually enabling it, coming in, allowing it to check. Now let's go ahead and add some another logic in here um, or another rung in here to actually monitor that. And what we're going to do is well, we're going to do the compare and we're going to do two ne uh, negative states or, or non equal to, not negative states, but not equal to. And we're going to get this control position again. So what we want to do is we want to get the first out control position, which in this sense we're using it as a control control um, out. So we want to grab this and come over here and get the position. And we'll say the position is not equal to zero or not equal to 480, which is our, our min and max, if you would. So if it's not equal to both of those, then we're going to enable a bit that latches in and says that we have a Let's call this batching 
first out fault. So this will be our batching first out fault. And let's just say, let's just call that first out fault detected. That way we know. So we'll go ahead and assemble that. Okay, so now I want, I want you to see this. Okay, so I want you to see the process right here. So let's, let's just say that it was an alarm. It would come over here and it would find that alarm. So you see it's the system with the, this first out fault, or not a first out fault, but the file bit comparison. What it's doing is comparing the source, so the filter data. It's comparing it against zeros. Then it's giving the result. And if the result is different than the standard, then what it's going to do is going to indicate which, where did it, what position did it find. This is why all your data is pertinent that it lines up properly, meaning all of your, you know, this, this is why we, we highly indicated the fact of, oh, by the way, we're using 10, or we're using 15 dents. We're using 15 dents for the reference. We're using 15 dents for the uh, result. And that way we can understand we're using 480 bits, which is the finite amount of actual data that we're using. Now, uh, Ken, when we come down here, now if we hit a reset, we're not going to be able to do re any reset anything right now until this comes back and puts a zero in this state. Now we can come in here and reset this, reset all that. We still have to come in here and clear all this data. So what we're gonna do in the very next video is come in and clear all the data out. So if we just put that back to zero and we click uh, the clear, or if you would use this as a clear, then we would come in and do that. Now all we have to do is come in and put in a reset as far as this goes, but in the efforts of what we're doing so far, we have our file bit comparison. My main goal here is to find, like, show you how a file bit comparison can be can work, and show you how things can be fluently find out where the things are going. So, like I said, if the, right here we figured out, like, let's just say, uh, bit five came in, it would come in and it would give you that number of that bit, right? So it would give you in our essence, the ninth uh, dent, which would, and that's gonna give you the bit. Again, this is why the bit level is highly important. So this is gonna give you 289 is what it found, right? So 289 is what it found in the position. That is the actual bit that it found, right? So if we come over here, clear that bit. And again, we'll come over here and clear everything um, and get everything back working when we hit, hit the reset. But we haven't done that yet. We're going to add the controls on there in the very next video and show how that is done. So with all that said, hopefully that adds some clarity to it. And as we as we kind of add on to the system, you're going to see how this file bit comparison works a little bit more. So uh, hopefully you got the basic foundation of that and how that works. Again, I suggest the more you practice with this stuff, the better you're going to get. So I do highly suggest you practice and implement this stuff yourself so you can see how things are working and how the data aligns. Because again, 15 bits here, 15 bits here, 15 bits here, all compare against each other to actually, actually the first two compare against each other to give the result right here. And that's going to be your end result of how a file bit comparison works. No matter how many bits you're using, or what the data size you're using is. Again, there are limitations, but again, I don't wanna to get too far into that. Just wanna show you a basic implementation of this and how things are working. With that said, we'll carry on to the very next video and we'll see you guys on the next one.